Does scripture talk about sex? You better believe it. One needs to go no further than the Song of Solomon to understand exactly what is going on. It's in very poetic, beautiful language, but nonetheless, it is explicit in its poetry. And God knew we'd have questions about sex. God knew, you know, we'd think about these things because we are sexual beings and we can embrace that. God gave us hormones. He gave us our our sexual desires for a reason, but to be used in the confines of marriage between a biblical marriage between a male husband and a female wife. God's way is the right way. Whether we feel it or believe it or not, God's way is always the right way. It's the perfect way and it is the good way. And so scripture does talk massively about sex in the Song of Solomon. You know, we see other places such as in Proverbs, uh, you know, uh, it speaks of let her breasts satisfy you at all times. You know, it talks about that between a marriage and just to enjoy one another uh, because our body no longer belongs to us. It belongs to our spouse. And likewise, our spouse's body no longer belongs to her, but it belongs to us. And that's the beauty of the two becoming one flesh and uniting. And then obviously there are other places in Scripture where the Bible clearly talks about sex, but how it's used wrongly. We see from 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 that do not be deceived. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God, neither drunkards, swindlers. And then it goes on to speak of adulterers. It goes on to speak of men who practice homosexuality. Uh, we know also in the homosexual aspect, we know from Romans 1, 26 through 28, the word isn't even used, but we know that there are consequences when it is sex is not done between the different um, genders, male and female, that it should be done within the confines of marriage, uh, we know that there are consequences such as you know AIDS occurring. Um, we also know that there are many times where God warns the people time and time and time again to not commit polygamy. Uh, we know that Paul the apostle even rebuked. In Corinthians, uh, the church that was still accepting the boy sleeping with his mother and saying, you cannot be putting up with this. Give him over. And if he's given over to Satan, so be it. But this, a lifestyle of habitual sin that is not des that one is not desiring to get away from or repent of, it should not be lingering within the church. Now, there's difference between stumbles. We all have them. Where there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit. But what we're talking about is unrepentant, undesired leave of habitual sin. So it's also talked about that. We see in the Old Testament, the New Testament, there are groups of people. There are people who, uh, obviously, as we already mentioned, commit adultery. Uh, Proverbs talks about this. The man who commits adultery is reduced to a crust of bread, which is absolutely nothing. I've seen this in my life. I've seen this with people who have done it. Their ministries, their reputations, everything is really destroyed. Um, and so it also talks about, in that 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10, fornication. You know, those having premarital sex, those having oral sex and doing other sexual things that should only be done within a biblical marriage. Uh, they will not inherit the kingdom of God if it is a habitual lifestyle state that is unrepentant. And so uh, sex is all over. It talks about the sexually immoral. It talks about the wrong ways of using sex, which God created sex. He created everything about sex, and he used it. Uh, he created it in order for us to be able to procreate and enjoy it within the confines of marriage. But obviously the Bible talks about sex when it is done outside of God's way, the damaging effects it has, the rebellion that it reveals of what is in man's heart, and the ultimate destruction and damnation of what it leads to, not only to us, our reputation and who we are, but also for our eternity to come if we don't repent of our sin. But thanks be to God, he's calling all people, he desires to save all, and we become born again when we believe Jesus Christ Lord and Savior and we repent of our sins. And we can just rest in the knowledge of knowing that God created sex. He most certainly mentions it, uh, across scripture, especially in the Song of Solomon. And if you're getting prepared to uh, get married or maybe your sex life has been a little lower than what you desire to be, maybe going through Song of Solomon uh, might be beneficial. And obviously there are plenty of other variables that take place within marriages of why sex life gets low. But even Paul warns and says, if you are to be a part those who are married, be apart, but only for a time so that the devil cannot come in and, and you know, and tempt you. 
uh, because when two people who are married are suppressed from sex for too long, someone's going to start looking elsewhere. Someone's going to start flirting with someone else. Someone's going to be tempted and lured into looking at pornography or having sex, committing adultery, uh, having an emotional relationship with someone else, whatever it is. So we need to make sure and know that God created sex and sex is extremely, extremely important within marriage. And we need to have that on a relatively consistent basis, lest resentment and bitterness builds up and people begin to go astray and go their own way towards the path that leads to destruction.